Well, Ukraine, it's the most dangerous, obviously, because this is the one place in the world where we could have the clash of nuclear armed forces on both sides. Um, right now, we've got the uh, the uh, Russian aid convoy has now uh, crossed into uh, Ukrainian territory, and they have done so at the point of... Uh, the, the checkpoint on the border, one of them which is controlled by the pro-Russian rebels. Uh, this, of course, uh, comes, and we talked about this uh, over Twitter uh, last weekend, right? Last weekend, you got to remember, there was this uh, absurd story starting from the London Daily Telegraph and the London Guardian. Perfid Albion, as usual, the worst warmongers of them all, trying to con everybody into a big war. They said, oh, we saw 23 tanks and APCs cross the border into Ukraine. And then Pornoshenko came out saying, oh, yeah, and we bombed them to hell. Where, where's the wreckage? Where's the film? It never happened. And these people are still sticking to their idiotic story. Don't let that go into the uh, annals uh, uncontested. We continued to contest it. It never happened. So right now, the aid trucks, these white vehicles, have come to Lugansk. Uh, they have proceeded through roads that are not controlled by the fascist militia. Um, this comes, uh, it's a, uh, an, a solution in extremis in some ways. The Ukrainians, of course, con artists, fascists, deception mongers, uh, had stalled this convoy for a week at least, keeping it there while people are being strafed, bombed, bombarded, killed, and otherwise. There's no uh, escort from the International Committee of the Red Cross. That's already suspicious. Uh, the Russian Red Cross says, okay, we can do it. ICRC should, uh, should uh, allow us to escort them. Uh, the ICRC now very dubious uh, stance. The ICRC had been clear that it was the Ukrainian sabotage that prevented this from uh, this convoy from getting across the border. Now we have President Pornoshenko is whining that this is a direct invasion. Well, I don't see anything uh, of the kind. Uh, and naturally, the Western media are playing along. They constantly harping on the charges by the Kiev fascists. Right, the Kiev fascists are worried that this convoy might be used for weapons, it might be a trick, what have you. Uh, and they use that to hide the fascist massacre of civilians, right? The pattern seems to be the following. You get the Ukrainian more or less regular forces, if we can use that term. Uh, the Ukrainian artillery, grad rockets, uh, Stalin organs, and so forth, go to the outskirts of these cities, Lugansk and Donetsk, and these are large cities in the you know, one million uh, inhabitant range. They bombard the city from the outside, kill lots of civilians, and then they send in the fascist goons of the right sector for massacres, and these are the brigades uh, generally associated with Kolomoisky. You'll remember Kolomoisky, the oligarch, and his forces made their debut with the attack on that government building in Odessa and the massacre of scores of people that were protesting fascist rule in the uh, Ukraine. So uh, now the Reuters dispatches, uh, especially yesterday, were claiming that there was heavy activity uh, at the um, uh, border at the, the checkpoints that are still controlled by the rebels, and there are some, uh, that there were lots and lots of um, tanks, APCs once again, and uh, volunteers essentially going across the border. Uh, that's also in the New York Times. As rebels falter, Russian border buzzes. Well, maybe the uh, New York Times writer was buzzed when he wrote that. The Organization Security Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, monitors say, no, uh, only people in khaki, but no guns, no tanks, no APCs uh, visible. So that's uh, all uh, going across. Um, concerning the uh, 
notorious Malaysian airliner, MH17, uh, you'd be surprised why you haven't heard more about that, right? Where's the finding, right? Where the investigation, what has this led to? Well, um, an, uh, a researcher friendly to this program has dug up the fact that there's an international accord that runs this um, investigation. So far, the Netherlands have signed on uh, Australia, British pawn, British stooge, Belgium, and Ukraine. They've all signed it. And the details of this, uh, it's interesting, Malaysia is not a part of it. Isn't that amazing? How can you have this without the country to whom the plane belongs? But each of those countries has a secret veto over the release of any and all information. How about that? Um, so... Uh, if you don't hear about it, it's maybe because there's a secret veto being exercised. Uh, once again, this is now time to back off. This is essentially skating along the brink <clears throat> of a huge tragedy. One century after Sarajevo, a lot of these characters have learned absolutely nothing. Now, just to, to, the Russians take this very seriously. Here we have the communique of the Russian foreign ministry uh, on the start of the delivery of humanitarian relief to the southeastern Ukraine. They say they can no longer tolerate the lawlessness of Kiev. The Russian side has decided to act. We are warning against any attempts to thwart this purely humanitarian mission. Those who are ready to continue sacrificing human lives to their own ambitions and geopolitical designs and who are rudely trampling on the norms and principles of international humanitarian law will assume complete responsibility. It means Pornoshenko, Kolomoisky, this entire gang, Taruta, the oligarchs, right sector, Yarosh, right? they've kept him in the closet. But he's there. Those are his guys doing a lot of the killing. Um, it's clear that if you uh, if you try to attack the white trucks, then uh, Moscow might have to respond to that. So uh, this is now the situation. Um, once again, we need people of goodwill to uh, condemn the support coming from the Western governments, the NATO governments, to the Kiev fascist regime. And that goes from Merkel above all, right? If Merkel is supposedly such a sympathetic observer, as Stephen Cohen and others are arguing, let's see some action from Merkel to get away from the brink of a big war. Back in a minute.